Welcome back to the Property Gurus. Today we are going to show you the cladding of the loft staircase. So we can see we've just come up the first set of stairs, the original stairs, that's all clad in oak. All the floors in this house are oak. And this staircase that was installed as part of a loft conversion is a standard softwood finish. Uh, it's relatively cheap. And you can see here that all of these stairs have a protruding nose. So they have a little overhang. And usually if you're putting carpet on these stairs, you would fit the, you'd put staples underneath the front edge of that bull nose overhang to uh, fix the carpet to the underside. This is the loft when it was first uh, created. If we just have a quick look back down the staircase, you can see that it's pretty unimpressive, not very dazzling, but we're gonna convert this into something amazing through um, adding some oak cladding. So these are the materials that we're going to use. It's a standard tongue and groove system. So we've got normal planks of oak and we have bought some pre-made nosings. So this is a bull nose finish. So you can see it's got the rounded edge at the front. So it will give us a really lovely professional finish and that, that's gonna sit on the front edge of all the steps. And then on the back of the nosing, we've got a groove that's been pre-made and that fits perfectly into this plank system. So it's the same gauge, same thickness as the planks themselves. So it will provide us with a nice smooth finish on the step and in classic fashion, We've got the tongue system from the plank and the front edge of the nose will fit neatly on top of that and provide us with a nice clean surface. So, so this is the, the equipment that we need. We've, we've got 14 steps. That we need. We've got so we bought 14 steps. Bull nose we've actually purchased 15 of these nosings these just in case we make an error or cutting. One we don't have to go back to the store. To run out and of wood just when you're these in the, are the last standard stages of the job and have to then go back oak wood uh, just to waste the time and, so and waste they've got of, of a very thin effort for everybody. So this wood is the, the same top. as the so nosings, the it's oak, the rest of it but it's unfinished, so it doesn't have any sort grain, of so oil or anything boards. on it, and we will oil have any sort all of it afterwards so that it has a consistent look and matches up. We did consider using brushed and oil for the flooring, but then we have difficulty matching the nosing to the flooring on the stairs, as well as a few issues, so we thought it was better to have both with the same finish and then to add the finish to remove any stairs. So the first job that we have on the stairs is to remove the nosing from the original softwood staircase that was installed. So this is a multi-tool, the sharp cutting edge, slightly laborious job. You literally have to go around and just shave the front nose off every single step. But what you need is a nice square edge. Because we're fitting wood on top of this, we need it to be a, a, as, as close to 90 degrees as possible. Now you can see here that it's not perfect, but when we're putting the cladding over and over this finish, uh, you won't notice any of this and, and it will form a perfect finish eventually. But we've had to take all these nosings off. It doesn't matter if you've got slightly jagged edge and it's not perfectly straight as you can see here, because it's gonna be covered over with the floorboards and the nosings anyway. So here's the staircase with all of the nosings removed. So this is now ready for us to start looking at cladding these stairs. You can see we've cleaned them down a little bit. Um, but the first thing to do that we want to do is make sure we painted all the inside of the stairs themselves because that's a much more difficult job to do later. So if we jump forward a bit, you can see that we've now painted everything on the inside. So we're ready to start cutting this, the nosings and the boards to size. So we're showing you here a winder because uh, these are more tricky. There's two angles on this winder and what we're doing, we've taken a piece on either end of that to get the correct angle to cut the far end of the nosing. So we know the, the length that we have to put the nosing on the winder, the, the, which is, and the winder is just a fancy name for the triangular steps as you go into a turn. And so we know the exact length. So what we've done here is cut out the corners to make sure that the angle fits perfectly when we take it back to the stairs. So using an off cut from a piece we'd already cut down slightly, 
we've tested that angle, so we've trimmed that a few times, made sure that the angle fits perfectly, and then it's literally a case of taking that to the full piece and then scoring it on, as we've just done with the pencil, and once you've got that angle cut out, you can then take it to your chop saw, cut down, and then when you take it back to the actual stair and present it, this should fit perfectly now. So you can see that we've had to cut a couple of different angles on either end to make sure that this fits. And once you've done that, it just minimizes the risk of damaging or uh, cutting your nosing too short because uh, they're expensive, these pieces, and you want to make sure that any mistakes that you make are done on cutouts and small pieces rather than on the big piece. So on this one we're just taking it, fitting it, seeing if it, sit, if it fits. This is slightly too big and we would always recommend if you're going to err on the side of caution, make sure you leave a little bit extra because you can always trim it away as we're doing here. We're just literally taking a shaving off a very small amount off the end just to make sure that it fits perfectly. Always better to have these things slightly longer and then trim it down later, then take it to the step and find that you've cut it too short and you've left a gap because you will see that gap every day and every time you go up those stairs, you'll be seeing that gap and you really don't want that. So you need to do this for every single step. Obviously, the square ones are easier than the diagonal ones. Now, to fit the board itself behind that nosing, one of the easiest ways we found to do this is to take a piece of your floor covering. So this is just a spare piece of plastic that we were using to protect the original floor. So you can use anything, but as long as it's um, easy to work with, cut that down. So you've got, we, we've cut that so we've got the exact width of our board here. And then we're taking it to the winder, so the diagonal step, which is an awkward size and awkward shape and it's got angles and it's pretty tricky. You can use uh, fancy equipment and there are lots of different gadgets for this, but we've found that using a piece of plastic like this, take it to the step, cut it to size, so you get the exact angle and you also get the exact size of the piece of wood that you're looking to create. You can see here, we're gonna to have to use two pieces of wood because this first piece leaves a small triangular patch in the corner. So our boards aren't wide enough to be able to fill this gap with one piece. We need two pieces. So we cut that to size, then take it back to your board and you've got the exact angle here. So start with the corner of the board, draw the angle in using your stencil as we've got here and then draw the other side. Now obviously this stencil isn't perfectly straight, but it's giving us the angle that we need. The critical thing here is getting the right angle because if you don't get that angle correct, it's not gonna fit and you're gonna waste wood. And we're trying to minimize the wood, there's expensive flooring. So take something with a straight edge, we're just using a saw here, which is on site and easy to use. You can use a metal ruler, but um, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you're happy working with tools, a saw, does the job perfectly well and just make sure that you create that same angle with the saw using a nice straight edge and that what this is doing is basically taking that template that we presented to the stairs and making it now uh, we're just putting that impression onto the actual board itself and then if we trim that down so we can use the chop saw again let's make sure that the line is perfectly straight and follows the angle that we cut out and we've just drawn onto the board. So we cut that on both sides. We're gonna use a handsaw for the other angle because uh, it's more than 60 degrees and um, slightly awkward to, well, using to do on this chop saw. So just a bit easier on the side to actually just use a handsaw. And if you get a nice steady hand, then you should be able to follow the line of uh, your stencil that you've just created. So we chop both sides and then once we cut this through, we'll take it back to the stairs and we'll fit it into the nosing itself. So this is the nosing we cut a few minutes ago. So this fits in nicely through the tongue and groove system. And what we should have once we've done that is the first piece of this winder step, which fits nicely into place. So the angles are all correct. Now you can see a little gap 
uh, against the stair up. above. That's not a problem because we're putting risers as well as treads on here. So the riser will sit on top of that. So you don't have to worry if you've got some slight gaps where the two stairs meet because you're going to drop down a riser on top of that. So just to make the final piece of this stair, taking another piece of the, the protective flooring, cutting it to size so we've got the size of the triangular piece we need as the final part of this step. So we'll take that back over to the chop saw. Same process again. Use this stencil to create your angles. So it's the angles that you're really concerned with as well as the size of the piece. And then once you've got those angles, um, you can make sure that the lines you've got are 100% straight. So you can use your saw or metal ruler again, uh, draw those lines in, and then you can cut out that piece. And that should fit perfectly into the gap that you've got left on the winder. So it's a slightly slow process doing these triangular steps, but it's really important if you want to minimize the wastage from your wood, which is fairly critical to keeping the cost down, then it's really important to do the measurements and, and get the exact size first time rather than having a trial and error system because you'll just burn through a whole load of wood and uh, the job then starts to get really expensive and as you probably met, which uh, is not ideal. So this should enable you to be able to get those pieces right first time as long as you've done measuring correct with your stencil and this piece once you've cut it out should have exactly the right angles and exactly the right dimensions to fit into that gap we've got on the stairs so if we go back to the stairs take the two pieces we've already put together fit this final triangular piece at the top and that then creates the perfect oak clad stair for this winder so that's how to do the tricky triangular pieces. The square pieces are fairly straightforward. You just measure the length and the depth. And the, the piece, the boards we've got here are big enough to be able to fit straight onto these squares. So once you've done, you've cut out every single step, you want to mark them up and number them. So we have numbered every single piece here. So this piece is the nosing and the tread for stair 14, so this is our final stair, which is a fairly easy rectangular piece. The one beneath it is number 13. So the first piece here, this is the riser. So this will be the vertical piece that will sit, that you look at as you're walking up. And then underneath it, we've got the nosing and the tread. So if you number every one of those, then make sure that you don't get confused. If you just put them in a pile without numbers, it can be a nightmare. So make sure you number every single piece as you're measuring and cutting it so that you know exactly which piece fits where because your steps might not be all the same size. So you want to make sure you get the right piece in the right place. Okay, fitting. So we've decided that we glue is sufficient for this staircase. Um, it's it's new, it's relatively square, so strong adhesive, and this is special flooring adhesive. So we bought this from a specialist flooring merchant. So we're applying it liberally, so we're putting a lot on. And then if you use a trowel like this with the serrated edge, what that does, it creates um, Within the glue, it creates air pockets, and then as you press it into place, it squashes down all those air pockets and makes sure that the glue sucks in across the whole piece and is really tight and gives you a really good tight finish. So that's what you'd be looking for aim for. So you apply the glue just using um, a, a standard knife, um, you know, a, de a decorator's knife. So this is going on, but before you fit any of the pieces, you need to make sure that you run something through it that's got a serrated edge. So you can get small plastic handheld um, pieces for the same sort of thing. It's this type of tool that you'll use when you're laying tiles. So you want the same sort of serrated finish in your glue or adhesive. But it's really important because it creates that air pocket as you push down those air pockets are then pushed out 
and it really sucks the wood down into place and makes sure that you get a really tight fit and that the adhesive is consistent across the whole of the piece of the wood. So we've applied the glue here, just laying it on, and then you run the trowel through it to get those lines. You want to see those lines in all of your glue right up to the edges, because that's going to make sure that none of these pieces come loose and that you don't have any uh, creaking or wobbly floor pieces and stairs as you're walking up them. This is going to this glue is super strong, so once it's set, it's really difficult to get it off. But you need to make sure when you're fitting it that you put those nice um, lines into your adhesive, because that's then going to make sure that once it sets, it's going to be nice and consistent, and the whole step will be completely fixed down and isn't going anywhere every time you walk upon it. So yeah, just take your time doing the glue putting it all through, make sure it goes all the way to the edge of every single part of the underlying step. And then it's just literally a case of taking the tread itself, which we've already cut out. And we know this is tread number one from our numbering system. So we take tread number one with the nosing attached to it and then press that firmly into place. And it will help if you're walking up and down these steps as well, because then you're going to be applying even more pressure and making sure because th this glue will take up to 24 hours to set so it's going to be relatively slow but once it's set then we're in place for good so we'll just show you a few more of the steps here same process so the vertical uh, part of the step which is called the riser we're applying the glue to those pieces because it's vertical so it's much easier to actually put the glue onto the board when you fit it in place you might need to just knock it down a little bit, make sure it's tight against the board below uh, before you, you put the tread on. So fit that nicely into place. Once that's on, you can then apply the glue for the next one. You can see we've already done this one. And then we're just laying the tread firmly into place. You can see the nosing, how that's creating a nice overhang on the stairs, really giving us that sort of first class finish, starting to look quite upmarket. So same process with the riser. The glue's applied to the riser. Press that firmly into place. Make sure it's nice and tight. And you can see you can't, it removes the gap with the stair below. And if you do get any adhesive that squeezes out and just uh, oozes here and there, which will happen, just make sure you have a wet cloth to hand and wipe that off whilst it's still wet. Because if you wipe it off now, it'll be easy. This, this wood will dry and it won't leave a mark. If you leave it and it sets, then you're going to have a problem because oak is your finished surface. So you don't really want to be having to remove any adhesive if you can avoid it. It can be done. The, the oak we're working for with here is unfinished. So you can apply some white spirits or some chemicals to remove that if you have to. Now having a look at this winder piece, same process. You can see that we've applied the adhesive to the stair below, but we've also put some in the top corner, the small triangular piece. We've put adhesive on the back of that just to make sure it gets right into the corner. It's quite awkward putting the glue right in the corner. So here's the finished staircase. You can see how upmarket, how impressive, what a quality finish this gives you. We've applied a layer of oil to this staircase to give it that rich golden look. But you can see the nosings look fantastic. The overhang, it just gives you that really high end first class feel and it ties in perfectly with the floor that we've we've laid in the loft so looking back down the stairs absolutely top end finish you compare this to what we had previously with the softwood this is really at the upper end of the market you won't get something more impressive than this you can see i've got socks on here such a great feel underfoot this is um, a brushed finish so it gives you that nice textured feel you can feel the grain in the wood you can just look at the detail on these triangular winders. You can't really see the its planks. It just looks like it's been made to measure. Absolutely first class, fantastic finish. So just looking down on that, compare that to what we had previously. This is a really impressive, fantastic finish. So thank you for watching. We hope it's helped give you an idea as to what you can achieve. So please subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.